uh, and I'm recording it. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to share, maybe towards the end of the session, I would be sharing it. So welcome um, each one of you for the second day session on uh, qualitative research. And today we would be focusing on the two books that I have. In fact, there are three books out of which uh, two of them are more important. And one, I will be asking you to read it or let us see how much time is there, if not today then definitely tomorrow again, we would be uh, focusing on it. Now, if you uh, look into the uh, books that I have shared with each one of you, you would see that the first book, uh, which is taken care of by Karl Popper, uh, you know, the full name for his name, though we uh, keep on talking, um, I mean, referring to his last name. However, the complete name of the uh, author is Karl R. Popper. And this particular, these uh, three books, I would say, are the standards across the domains uh, when you are into the field of research. Now, in our country, again, uh, whether you are coming from the field of, uh, let's say, management or law or architecture, all these fields, you will see that, uh, you know, there is nobody who talks about uh, these are uh, textbooks or uh, recommend also to go ahead and read some of these uh, lines or the chapters which are available from in this book. Karl Popper um, belonged to that era. Now, after the session today, um, I would be sharing certain uh, Wikipedia pages, uh, especially on authors and some of the terminologies which I would be uh, introducing them tomorrow, not today. So today we are just going to talk about conjectures and reputation. And before I can start off with this, there is um, something that I want to share with all of you. And that is, again, a new kind of a knowledge uh, which is given to each one of you uh, since we do not have these uh, topics taken care of in our, um, I would say, research methodology classes or even in the, um, I would say, the uh, workshops that are taken across. So maybe in future, I will enter into the depth of it. However, just try to understand uh, how the research started off and what exactly is happening across the globe, um, you know, a few centuries ago. That's what I would say. Now, when uh, the research started off, started off in the sense the human being was quite, um, I would say, uh, anxious to know certain things, curious to know certain things, or, uh, you know, they were trying to find out certain things. Uh, you know, there were two things that were taking place, um, I would say, across the globe. One, which we can call it as the traditional approach of the research in India itself, where uh, right now when I say research, I'm not talking about the way we are doing it. I'm talking about the uh, way in which the history of the research has shown to us. And on the other side, you will see the Western concepts. Uh, that's what I would be writing out here. WP stands for the uh, center of the Western countries or the Western countries, how they were looking at the research. Now, if you look historically, uh, which I gave the example yesterday, uh, because majority of the Western countries are being dominated by the Bible, whether they are Catholic or Protestants, irrespective of that. Uh, so, Bible was the first, uh, I mean, uh, the people started believing because it's a book given to us uh, for, um, let's say, as a holy book, um, you know, in the Western country. So whatever the Bible said, okay, everybody blindly used to believe it. Then from, it was not, I'm introducing these concepts also side by side. And I will be giving you the definitions of this after some time to understand what exactly it means and why these things are taking place for us in that way. Now, here you will look that it was not only just the beliefs. However, from the set of the beliefs, the knowledge also started off for the individual, saying that, OK, these are our belief sets. And from here, we are developing the knowledge, irrespective of whether it is right or not. 
and everybody trusted that yes the set of the beliefs are consistent i'm using the word consistent i will be giving you a quick definition as to how to understand these words also then knowledge uh, when it came for the knowledge it was either right or it was a wrong kind of a thing before that um, uh, later on i will show you after this how the changes came in and what exactly was taking place now once the knowledge developed then there was uh, some kind of new information that was being given to us or not now what happened this is the way actually the entire thing has to be uh, drawn upon or the flow of the research began like that however since we started off with the bible so beliefs were there across the globe and they started developing there was some kind of the knowledge however here was the full stop a big full stop there was no new information at all if there was no new information then what was happening this was like a, a small circle where they began and they were ending up in this circle which we call it as the vicious circle in english so it why is this a vicious circle because there was nothing new which was being developed it was only the things that was there for them now suddenly what and in this one only they understood fine for certain things it was okay now however what happened to the scientific knowledge now this was the area where in a few people i would say dwelled upon certain textbooks or came across some document um by luck you can say or by uh, opportunity that they got whatever it is and they started off with experiments okay now what happened during these experiments they thought okay now let us see whatever the bible is saying it's fine however if we do not trust because on the parallelly what was happening in india and in other countries now i'm coming back leaving the western countries and coming to india india already had uh, you know i'm talking about in the century of 18 in century i'm going back to that uh, century to understand okay now prior to these 18 centuries there were a lot of uh, research that was being done however the research opportunities that were developing in india or let's say in the eastern countries um you know when i'm talking about eastern countries i'm also including the islamic culture also out here okay and in other countries so it is not just india you have china out here then japan is also there and uh, you know if you start looking okay japan and then came in uh, you know mecca medina those areas uh, you know the gulf countries and uae where they are talking about the islamic schools also okay now i'm not entering into different different schools of islam uh, i'm not interested as of now and uh, no um, i mean uh, sorry for some of the scholars who are from jamia or jamia hamdard or uh, even from amu so you know you should not feel bad that yes i'm not dwelling into this area this we will focus in maybe in later stages so here if i look into india china japan and uh, let's say islamic and the persian so these are the ma sorry to interrupt who is this felix here i yes, think yes. you intend to share the the slides but you are not sharing oh, i'm so sorry felix yeah. thank you for reminding me thank uh, you i'm sorry i'm sorry here we go and uh, here it is can you see it now felix Yes, now it's visible. Okay, it's so visible. let me just quickly recap what I wanted to find out and tell you. Thank you, Felix, for uh, um, highlighting this thing for me. I really appreciate it. Now you see, so research on one side, and then you have got the Western countries on the other side, and the traditional ones. That means, uh, traditional means I'm not talking about anything new that is being done here as of now. However. what was existing and how the research was being carried out in these traditions so here one form of the tradition was that uh, 
you know, the books were established like Vedas. You know, these books were completely uh, present, given to human beings uh, in the form of the, uh, there were two kinds of it, I can say, and the forms of the knowledge are very different uh, from, as we can think about from the Western perspective. Here, they were a different kind of ways in which these were given to us. Either they were in the written format on the uh, palm leaves or the other kind of stuff that they were using or chanting. Okay, so it was like, you know, giving away to the domain of human beings without questioning and they were simply learning and learning and learning was taking place out here. However, a time came when again people started debating the uh, things that were given to them in the form of mantras or the shlokas. So the next development and that thing I will uh, share it later on what comes after and how the things were carrying on out here. So you have got the Upanishads on one side. Then you have also got what you call it as the Puranas. The, I mean, majority of us, we think that these are all the mythological things. However, when we come to the domain of the research, these are not the uh, mythological things. However, they are evidences that yes, they were handed over from one person to the other person. So Puranas were that. And after that, we come across various schools of knowledge that were present for us. Now, why these schools? Now, uh, on one side, you have got the Vedic schools were there. Okay, so now I'm coming directly to the schools that are available for us. The Vedic schools are available. Then you have got, um, I would say, Charvakas who are called as the materialistic because uh, in Western uh, concept also, here I will be showcasing to you after some time uh, that yes, we have got the schools of the materialist out here. So when we talk about materialism, then what exactly is happening and what are those schools we will have to understand. Under materialism, you will see uh, Cartesians are one of them. Then we have got idealists uh, who are uh, available and you who uh, discuss about and give importance to the various things that are existing in this world. And we will see how to understand them also. Charvakas, then after that, we had Buddhism. Then came in Jainism, then after that, Nyaya Vaisheshika, then Sankhya was there, then Yog Sankhya, that's what we would say. The next school which I had introduced uh, yesterday was Mimamsa, and there were two different kind of Mimamsa schools that were present, and then came in Vedanta and the Advait Vedanta school. And then later on, now we are talking about the contemporary Indian schools of thought also side by side. So you can see that um, how many kinds of uh, schools are available to you. The best part in these schools is that, um, uh, you know, one way of understanding coming across the new knowledge. And in fact, I have to make you understand even that also. And uh, that is basically if you would look um, into the style of it, uh, which Popper also talks about in his uh, book, you will see is that uh, new knowledge, or as we are talking about, there are beliefs. From the beliefs develops the schools of thought, whatever uh, we have got, whether they are Western or Indian or Chinese or Japanese, Islamic, whatever. Now, here in the schools, the ways in which you, you can do the research work is, Number one, through falsification, which I introduced the word as such for you. So what happens in falsification is that you go ahead, you study a particular theory. Now I'm generalizing it rather than Popper uses the word conjectures. Conjectures means the word, uh, I mean, the theories or you can say the models that were given to you. I'm making it in a very summarized form. Otherwise, there is a typical um, definition that he is giving for the word conjectures. So he talks about in conjectures that yes, you can falsify a particular existing theory. Okay, now the definition of falsification comes in, uh, you know, which again, surprisingly, uh, you see none of you do in your research work. However, the appropriate way to understand is that you uh, 
perform or conduct a survey i'm making it uh, again in a very lucid manner i'm explaining to you you give it to your respondents collect the answers from them and come back after that you have to whatever the questions you have designed in your questions or the sentences which are there you have to translate them into statements now you see when i uh, see the phd theses uh, which are present out here i don't see anybody coming and translating these uh, questions or the sentences from english language to the statements that have to be given in a particular format now if you have designed the statement these statements are classified as true or false now this is the way we need to go ahead and understand and uh, uh, you know the word falsification is taking place here this part question is you are designing it you are getting the answers from your respondents is being done however this particular step of doing majority of you are uh, not majority i would say all of you are not translating them into the statements once you have translated your sentences and the answers that you have got into appropriate statement these statements are the one that has to be classified into truth or falsehood now these statements come into existence let me make it up into a uh, four or uh, different uh, four or five you can say different kind of uh, understanding again i'm not entering into that zone one is uh, the statements which are in the form of and the second is in the form of conditions which means if this then this one so something you write it down and then you get it this is another one i will explain to you very quickly however assuming that um, uh, this requires some kind of a training again so i'm not entering into the depth of it and then we have got the concept of either or that uh, are usually taken care of in other countries we don't uh, again here i don't see these things taking place at all so and if then either or okay now depending upon what kind of the statement we have got there are certain rules that are attached to it and then we come to the concept of truth and false for example if i see a statement wherein and word is coming we have exactly a four things and means between two variables which are there there are exactly four ways in which you can assign the truth or the falsehood for it and that goes in the form of true false i'm just giving you i'm not entering into the intricacies because this sounds very weird for each one of you now this will be like another workshop wherein we understand it however this is just for the sake of the sharing of the knowledge that i'm sharing so if this is uh, i'm sorry in a very quick manner i have given it away this would be for the first variable it would be true true false false and for the second variable it would be assigned as true false true false and when you are finally coming for your statement it would be in the form of those two variables which are in the case or uh, sense of p and q so if both of them are true in the sake of uh, for the sake of and answer is true in the rest of the cases it is false so what does this mean focus is if you have seen any case uh, in your statement as well as in the earlier works of the individuals who have done that one variable is true and the second variable is coming out to be false consider them to be false if you see that yes both of them are true in uh, in the sense of the variables and it turns out to be the true for it in all other cases it is falsehood that you are taking out in the same manner if and then and either are are also there now this is how the concept of falsifications are coming in we start off like that and then we are taking care however uh, i don't see anybody here uh, thinking in this way or performing their research work even using these things so you know i don't know what to say about that particular uh, research anyway we just carry forward in that manner so first one is the falsification 
second he says that let us go ahead and look at our theory now if you agree it's fine and if you find it out uh, then that yes it does not fit in then you can go ahead you can criticize it now criticizing something uh, is also a technique that are there and we um, come up across with certain arguments and there are uh, again the format which has been given to you and uh, that also i can show it to you very quickly we have got around 19 ways in which arguments can be designed number 1 and you can go ahead and you can uh, criticize something a simple tool is there for me for example you must have read in the papers they are talking about dilemma fallacies now you know we do not know we simply write it down that yes uh, there is this fallacy however you should be able to learn how many what is a fallacy number one fallacy mean for example a person has given to you an argument okay in the form of one it can be of three steps it can be four so from two steps let's say he derives the conclusion for you and this is the aspect of the critical thinking now i'm not introducing the critical thinking in this particular workshop therefore uh, please do not ask me to give away those things also out here this is the structure of an argument that is taken care again nobody does here now here when i have the structure the structure is let's say i visit alpha ma'am's house okay alpha ma'am tells me ramni ma'am what do you would you like to now she's a perfect hostess for me and she gives me the option okay ramni ma'am tell me you would like to take tea because it is winter or you would like to go ahead and uh, take a cup of coffee now i would say alpha i do not take tea i do not take coffee so here i can say no tea and in my uh, if i just uh, take away from here and make up two a step and i tell her no coffee also for me so what is the argument that you deduce from here nothing we don't know what it is and what it is not basically yes or no so we are just kept quiet out here and we cannot proceed further alpha ma'am is in a dilemma now what should i do ramni ma'am does not consume tea she is not consuming coffee also so this is first one scenario where in she is in a dilemma now what should i do from here she, this is called as the structure of an argument which are taught in the cases where in we say critical thinking now here these are the ways which have been given to us and uh the moment you look into it you are able to format your argument and carry forward second case now i come across and i tell uh, ma'am okay here we go in the past now i visit ashutosh sir's place because he stays in greater noida where i'm residing so if i go to his house again he is a pakka uh, good a very good host again so he tells me okay ramni ma'am i know that you don't take tea so uh, tea or coffee Here, so the third option is I can give you the juice. Now, since these are winters, he knows that she will not take juice. So the left out is what soup. Now, in the second case, he knows it that yes, she is not going to take tea. So he will conclude now if she comes over to my place. I know she does not drink tea. She does not take coffee also. so the fourth case that he has in front of him is what only juice or the soup these are the two cases he has uh, got the answer with it i visit his house uh, and he knows uh, in this case again she will not take juice now this is for the not sign in uh, shortcuts we write it down so i'm just making up not juice also so he will be thinking 100% that yes she might go ahead and consume only soup she will be asking so he will either prepare or he will ask uh, mrs god to go ahead and prepare soup i arrive to his place okay and i tell him sir i don't take soups because uh, i'm more into gluten free and i don't know how you are making the soups i belong to the traditional families so i don't take soup so again now you understood the he has assumed out here 
these are the conjectures that we will have to understand and carry forward to see what things are happening now kindly go through these things and find it out whether you are able to understand before i can proceed to third and the fourth one also side by side okay so i'm just going to join you up in a minute Thank you. So I think um, all of you have got a flavor as to how the assumptions are working and what exactly is happening in these cases now. So these are the ways in which we uh, form the arguments and then carry forward. Now, why did I introduce all these things? Because when you are going to think critically, you know, and this is exactly what Popper uh, is telling us when he is talking about criticizing something. Okay, criticizing something, um, as I have showcased to you here in the next slide, that yes, it can be in the form of dilemma, number one. Number two, it can be in the form of fallacies. Fallacies in the sense that if an argument has been given to us, Okay, now there are ways in which you can say, oh, this person has uh, really formulated it in a very wrong manner. And we have, again, the techniques to identify these things also side by side. And there are around, uh, again, I have to say around 116 forms of fallacies which are there. And you can go ahead, let's say, uh, Sanjay gives me an argument in his uh, thesis and he says that this is what I prove. Therefore, this is what I'm proving. Now, I as a next reader or as a scholar will go ahead and I'll be seeing, oh, this is what he has formulated as an argument. However, from the list of these 116 fallacies, I identify that in his second argument in the step um, you know, he has given me a uh, wrong information. I'm not using the word wrong information. The way he has constructed his argument is wrong out here. Therefore, there is this fallacy. In that manner, I can say that, yes, see, what Sanjay has done is not the correct way. This is a fallacy we are talking about. So I have shown you one. I have shown you two. I have shown you three. Fourth, now 116 fallacies are there. That means under three, you have got the scope to identify those 116 ways and you can say, oh, this particular um, part of the theory or the model that they have come across is completely wrong. So this is taken away from me. Next, fourth one is your dilemma that we are talking about. So it would be your now, dilemmas I have shown to you. This is one way of talking about that uh, what kind of dilemmas. Again, it totally depends upon us. And we have got the, um, again, the format for the dilemmas are there for us. And again, there are around eight varieties of dilemmas that you can uh, really form, form and then present it out in your paper or in your thesis also. Apart from uh, dilemmas, there are certain things which you call it as paradoxes. Okay, now this also uh, goes ahead and we can form around, um, I would say, 65 varieties of them are there. So the paradoxes you are able to identify. 
in somebody's this thing and you will say oh the paradoxes are there so i have got a chance to go ahead and handle these paradoxes in that particular paper or in that particular thesis and you can carry forward to see how it is right or not then comes uh, your critical appreciation that he is talking about when you are taking care or you can completely go ahead and say that i don't agree with his theory or the model that he has given i am going to refute it now you see these are the words now if you start reading the papers uh, which are published in the uh, scopus journals or ugc you will see a i'm talking about very good papers now when you start reading them they are using these words also okay the, uh, i can identify the paradox so the scope of this paper is to go ahead and remove that paradox or to handle whenever the paradoxes are there you have got the uh, dilemmas of all the fallacies that you're talking about we have got two or three or four or five horns so you know you say i have got so many horns out here so let me go ahead and deal with them okay so paradoxes are there then you can do the comparisons between uh, two models and uh, you can say that yes these are the faults that i'm finding it out or the comparisons that you want to take care of it basically so you will see that it's not all arguments you would be collecting the arguments from all the papers now nobody from india i haven't seen any of the scholar or the faculty going ahead and presenting the arguments uh, for and against we say whether you are for it uh, like i hope all of you understand what these things are and we have got a complete set of again rules from which you can make the arguments for and against now for example in a court the judge is sitting over there and he is thinking okay i'm uh, there two lawyers are there in front of him and he might say ki, okay i can agree to one lawyer i may not agree with the other lawyer also so here you have got the chances to agree for some of them and you have got the chance to go against it also so now can you see that yes and tell me very honestly don't have to tell me keep it to yourself and understand and see are we doing any of these things in our research work or what are we trying to do it okay so this is uh, again the whole thing and this comes only if you are doing your review of literature literature review review of literature then i told you systematic literature review and the critical literature review now you see when you are fitting yourself into the final part at that's the stage when we are looking for the missing links or the gaps that are present in your uh, i mean that you're collecting from the prior literature or we will see in the observations also side by side so i have just as i told you yesterday i will not be entering into all of them um just some of them that i'll be taking care of and here is what uh popper is telling to you that yes go ahead falsify them completely criticize them that's what he says then he is talking about comparative works you can carry forward and he says that if you are able to uh, do this kind of a thing okay within yourself in your research work then he says from here the exactly uh, you know if you look into his book the first book he is talking about reputations now reputations itself um, again we don't have so much of time that's why i have shared the book otherwise what we usually do it is read line by line of that particular those chapters that has been given to us and we say okay now see in the uh, scientific domain because each of our research that we are um, taking care of or conducting that is exactly uh, similar to a scientific knowledge what happens in the scientific domain all of us are aware uh, if not let me explain to you very quickly out here as to what is happening in the uh, scientific area now first of all you have a theory okay a theory is given then you take some uh, study material or whatever it is uh, you know if you are doing quantitative then you have got the study material with you and if you are doing the qualitative you have got the entire experimentation things are available then you go ahead and you experiment it 
now when we are talking about experiments here you are actually performing it in a population wherein you select your sample size and you say ki okay this is my experimentation that i have done you come to a observations you are performing out here and then you come to the conclusions after analyzing the data after studying the entire uh, information that you have got now i'm not uh, inserting those steps out here now once you have come to the conclusion what do you see does your conclusion match to the theory that you have started off or do you see that there are certain discrepancies scientific knowledge most of them they say that okay whatever the conclusions have been given so my theory is absolutely right however if you are going ahead and you find out that something is wrong in uh, in uh, during the way in which you have performed your experiment or something is coming new thing is developing then you go ahead and say ki, okay my conclusion is different from the prior theory so you conclude that yes this one is not correct either you falsify it once you are falsifying you have to use these techniques out here in the sense you will say okay this is true whatever the theory has said for me it is true that means my theory was also true so both of us are on the same page so you are not giving me any new knowledge out here however if you find that yes this particular theory was true in those scenarios given those scenarios however in the given scenarios if for example this was uh, the theory was given to you uh, during the non pandemic time now in the pandemic time you find that this is not true this is coming out to be false for you so if you have falsified it then you go ahead and you give me a new theory for it you understood now this is exactly what popper is telling us through that methodology that yes see falsification now this is again a very rigorous exercises which we do it properly and then we come across with these kind of things that we are discussing similarly you start criticizing it criticizing i have shown to you in my other slide that yes how you can uh, go ahead and do the criticism either you identify the paradoxes in the prior literature or the methodologies in the qualitative domain of a person you find the dilemmas again i told you that there are eight varieties of dilemmas and you can calculate 65 116 eight i have given you in the same manner reputations i don't know how many methods are there in fact i can tell you this much that they are more than 200 maybe tomorrow i can identify how many ways are there to refute something and then i will be able to help you out in this plan okay and so you can see how many methodologies you have got out here again the practices which are present and this we do in critical thinking we give a very rigorous exercises to understand the different kind of paradoxes to understand the fallacies now if you have identified those things those fallacies and all you write a super paper now you understand what we are lacking in our country it's very easy to say that yes my paper is published and we all know uh, it's not just publishing of the paper however there are certain other things also which are involved now here now if i go and talk to editor and i say how can you even publish this particular paper tell me you see this is the reason why in scopus uh you know the papers are rejected and it keeps on coming back and hitting us because they are aware of it at the back now when i had a discussion with mr mehra who is the uh, owner for the sage publications across the globe and then immediately he asked me ramani uh, tell me first of all where the paper is coming from so i tell in india he says sorry i cannot you can talk to the editor if the editor is fine with it you can go otherwise please don't approach because i don't approach the editors directly i approach him because he's a very good friend of mine so when i'm talking to him all these things he says ramni i have a doubt and i take the indian stuff with a pinch of salt and i just have to look at him reason he is also highly educated and a literate person so he knows that where the loopholes are there so you know he does not even when i talk to the indian office of sage it becomes very difficult for us to approach them and uh, ask them that yes we are looking for uh, something to do with the authors out here 
so now you are able to understand what we are lacking in our papers also side by side number one so i'm not uh, again given to you some of them like comparisons there are again the way you can compare are around 10 varieties of the comparisons that we can do arguments there are around uh, the arguments that have been given to us in the set of again these arguments are classified as deduction and inductive arguments under the deduction we have got around uh, 10 10 and 16 so 26 of the deductive arguments are present inductive also we have got around more than 30 i i know 30 is the minimum that i have learned and more than that there are books and my uh, teachers tell me pick up that book and learn all by yourself now so you know you have got these kind of a things uh, for us and Popper is making it very clear because Popper is aware of it. So I've just um, made you understand about the four varieties that we are talking about as, as given to us by um, Popper on one side. On the other side, when I was talking about the Indian schools here, they don't go by these methodologies. What do they have? They got fallacies, number one number two they have got the meanings they are talking about then they are talking about the language that has been used out there okay so there are varieties of all these things which are available then the arguments which are there number one number two their style of knowledge um or to go ahead with the research is basically debates now debates uh, in our country we understand more that yes it's a verbal tool kind of a thing however in the traditional schools you will see that they are talking about verbal or return or you can also say both um, verbal and the written format so you will find it out that the people who are discussing and going ahead with the research manner is basically first of all to give their own uh, school principles or what you can call it as the uh, topics which are pertaining to that particular school number one then they pick up and say see this particular school did not talk about this one therefore our school is talking about it therefore we don't believe in them we believe in this school so have you understood it's again falsification however here it is along with the debates that's why uh, even if you look at some of the television series on buddhism or jainism you will see that the uh, rishis or the sages who were there and who were taking care of their own school they were basically uh, debating them they used to call all the scholars together they used to stand here in the primary position and then the debate was started off so here uh, we are not entering into the debates when we do the research part however we just look at the school's tenants out there tenants in the sense the principles i'm talking about t e n e t s okay this is the word which is nothing but the doctrines or their principles we take them and then we fit it with our uh, research that we are doing you know for example a company or i'll show you those papers today uh, while i'll be sharing the other stuff with you all so you will be thinking that yes i am supposed to know the doctrines which are there number one and if you belong to the school of nyai nyai is highly logical school that we have got and the way they present out now if you uh, look at the book in quantitative philosophy especially when neither sir is talking about mediation or moderation the uh, models that has been shown in that particular um, workshop if you look at it they have been really discussed in these schools and uh, he, there we have got uh, around 258 models of mediation and moderation that has been given to us however in this school they have given to us more than 1000 models have been given to us and while i was discussing with those people as to how they have got you know they said that we were handed over certain materials and down the line i identified that yes those people ultimately are focusing on these books only and coming up with the um variation moderation models or let's say some other models also which are there now i'm not entering again into the depth of it 
so now you have understood something which is existing in my country none of us are able to focus on these things which are there we are just interested into what has been presented to us due to the uh, western countries and the concepts of it and then we carry forward however i would say it's not a bad idea at least you are mastering part of it however that mastering should be done in a right manner so i see some of the individuals um, in my own country are doing the i mean uh, uh, putting in their efforts to go ahead in a right process basically so this is one of the reasons why you will see that i have gone ahead and uh, gave you the books by popper uh, kuhn so that you are able to read them properly and uh, you know understand what the science now i hope you all understand what exactly do we mean by scientific knowledge number 1 and how uh, popper and kuhn when they discovered it because they observed it copernicus uh, you see i gave you this example yesterday also bible believed it again and again i'm repeating it earth is in the center of the universe and sun is moving around it okay by the time copernicus he discusses this example in depth you know popper and kuhn and that's why the titles of their books are conjectures and reputation and the other book is the scientific discoveries out there you know so here he says that the moment copernicus came in he understood that yes this is falsified completely and he came up and he said that it is the sun who, which is in the center of the universe and not earth is revolving around it later on uh, addition was done and uh, other scientists or the physicists they said it is not just the earth which is revolving around the sun there are other planets and the position of these planets were also given to us like venus then comes the earth then you know they went over and then they said this thing and now of course all of us do believe that uh, in the past few years initially we had pluto also added out in our um, uh, system of the uh, planets and the sun now they have removed pluto and they are not uh, they are mum on this one completely and we do not know what is the status of it right now even i uh, may not be able to help you out in this way completely okay so we will have to understand so this is one of the examples uh, which he takes it up in his book and he is able to explain to you uh, what conjectures are now these are the conjectures that you take it up and the way you are developing your beliefs for example in our country in india if i have to see uh, yesterday i gave you the example that yes our uh, mother and father our parents you know they keep telling us okay get up early in the morning take bath and then immediately set off your work however how many of us really understand that that yes uh, so you know the set of beliefs are coming in um due to our culture due to our educational systems the way the families have been developed you know all these things are also matter therefore you will see the papers which are written millennials are thinking about the pet animals that was the paper that i presented out in one of the um, um iim um, forum and there their paper was accepted and they uh, applauded it a lot reason due to a pandemic time number one millennials on the second hand and third the pet animals i was talking about now millennials they refused to get married they said that we don't we are not interested in getting married and giving birth to babies and all instead we would like to adopt the animals okay and we are going to take care of them as though they are my own babies so you know uh, if you look at facebook that was the qualitative study that i have done and uh, you know in that the uh, the complete uh, forum you know they said now the pet animals especially the dogs i'm talking about they said that they are my babies now i started off my journey with the movie of fane khan do you remember that scene where ashwarya rai uh, while she was about to eat the maggi noodles cooked by rajkumar uh, rajkumar only yes that is his name and she says oh ustad ustad ko bhi bhook lag rahi hogi remember that dialogue and i have to write a complete paper on it which i'll be sharing it with each one of you as a qualitative paper which i presented out at jnu 
and again that paper was applauded saying that why is it that we did not if you observe that movie ashwarya first suddenly she does not continue eating and she stops um, you know putting that placing the noodles into her mouth and she says instantly oh ustad ko bhook lag rahi hogi tum ja ke ustad ko leke aoge so what was the next sentence out there rashkumar says oh ustad ustad kon so she says and looks at him my pet animal you know she does not say my dog you know she says my pet animal and then he does uh, ustad your best friend now you see she is talking about uh, her pet animal as a best friend so you know uh, this is how i developed the entire argument for myself and i went first of all my paper the qualitative paper that i published it which i'll be sharing it uh, maybe after some time with all of you you can have a look at it and i said that yes in this film i was able to come up with the concept of the philosophy of caring now he said that okay तो वो पूछती भी है राजकुमार से तुम उसको कोई दिक्कत तो नहीं करोगे ना उसको आराम से लेके आओगे ना तो ही से कि क्या मैं कुत्ते का चोर लगता हूं तुमको रिमेम्बर अब यही रह गया है मेरे को कि मैं डॉगीज का चोर करता रहूंगा या मैं ऐसे करूंगा रिमेम्बर इट वॉज जस्ट अ क्लिप ऑफ अराउंड फाइव मिनट हवे आई रोट अबाउट थ्री पेजेस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर थिंग uh the entire article and you know you will enjoy it and from that if you look at facebook now they are grooming the animals they are uh, taking them to the beauty parlor they giving them nice baths are there for them so the, you know a lot of things have been taken up after that so uh, you know you can have a look at it and see how the things are coming up so millennials have got their own set of beliefs out here so in the belief or the culture now if you would know that yes the cultures are so different indian culture within india also south indian culture is so different from the north indian culture now in winters obviously if you will ask me ramni ma'am are you going to eat dahi chawal i say oh no i wouldn't however you go to bangalore and there uh, you know whenever they want to eat something uh, very quickly either idlis or dosas or they have got the dahi chawal they are very happy with that if you give it to them they don't want anything else so the cultures or the culture of tea that i have given to you yesterday was also very different uh, from uh, country to country now the way they consume it so you know you will have to understand uh, the cultures that you have got chennai express again the antakshari that has taken place between deepika padukone and shahrukh khan if you will say the i movement the way that she was talking with the accent those are the cultural things that i'm talking about so at the level of the beliefs a popper is telling us that yes there are a lot of things that you can come up and you can talk Now, for example, if you are a science student and you know that the way a salt is written, I'm talking about the edible salt, the common salt. For me, it is basically NaCl. We all know that NaCl is nothing but the common salt. Now, it happened that me and my sister, when we were sitting on the dining table and we were learning these things, I used to tell her, "Can you please pass me a bottle of that uh, NaCl?" my mother used to get irritated and she used to say what are you both of you talking nacl and all this thing can you please uh, maintain the discipline on the table so you know that is because why because me and my sister we were talking in the terms of the uh, basically what you call it as the chemistry language whereas my mom does not know the chemistry language so well so she had the difficulty now if i have to tell her can you give me the bottle of h2o so my mother again she used to get irritated however why i'm telling you is that this is the culture of the uh, students who know these things and they are speaking in this manner okay so the beliefs itself are so many of them are there that again when you are writing you can write a lot for example my experience when i went to uh, uh, leh ladakh and when i saw the buttered uh, tea no that was uh, i was amazed that butter tea is made in a bamboo stem and i was thinking how it would uh, you know taste like so i was a bit apprehensive about it when i went to kashmir uh, there when i tasted the noon chai the salted tea i had a different uh, taste altogether which i really liked it and i love to take this tea however if you ask me to drink the normal tea that is prepared in delhi and the other region i do not drink at all because i never tasted it i just like the smell of it and i come back however if you ask me iced tea i love it
you know, so you can ask me for iced tea, for lemon or the uh, peach ones that you have got. I enjoy it like anything. So these are my set of beliefs. Why? Because I understood how I was brought up or my own personal experiences. So the culture of mine is very different. So you can understand that you can write your own thing. Like yesterday when I discussed about the partition times. Now, I told you one scenario uh, when I was traveling from, um, uh, you know, Delhi to Amritsar. I uh, met a young couple in the bus. I preferred to travel. I couldn't get the train ticket. So I was traveling in the bus only, AC bus, Volvo bus. This young couple approached me and I got the, because when I booked my tickets, it's usually the Kirki seats. So I saw this young couple approaching me and they requested me that their mother I mean, the son spoke to me and he said that my mother is traveling all alone to Amritsar. If you don't mind, you are also a lady sitting next to her. We are very happy to know about it. And if you can take care of our mother also, uh, you know, when she is going to Amritsar, we would be highly appreciated. I said, you need not worry and uh, I will be taking care. So naturally, when two ladies are sitting, there is a lot of conversation that is taking place between both of us. So I was able to build up that kind of a rapport with her for the next eight hours. And by the time we got down at uh, Amritsar, she invited me because she knew that I will be at Amritsar uh, at Guru Nanak Dev University for one week. And, you know, I would be able to come and uh, join her up. Now, just give me one minute today. I'm all alone. I just have to shut the door and I'm coming. Just have a look at these things. And I'm just joining up in one minute. Thank you. Thanks a lot, all of you. So by the time I reached Amritsar, she invited me because she understood that I will be there for one whole week. And she said, you can visit our place on Saturday. And uh, she arranged the transportation because I was new for Amritsar. The moment I went to her house and I started talking to her, uh, after some time, I saw that she was crying in a really bad manner. Now, I got shocked because as a guest, I was thinking that did I say uh, something wrong to her or did I hurt her feelings somewhere or what? Because she, I love Sarsoka Saak, so she prepared it in a very nice manner. And she said that that's an authentic way of preparing the Sarsoka Saak also. Now, while I was talking to her and then she started crying and I got a uh, little bit uh, tensed about it. I hugged her immediately and I asked her, why are you crying? Just to comfort her so that uh, she is uh, back to the normal state. And uh, surprisingly, then, you know, she started uh, talking to me, going back to her days of Pakistan, where they were living at the uh, Karachi. And then she said that, uh, uh, Ramil Pindi, sorry, not Karachi. She's from Rabul Pindi. And she told me that uh, Ramini, um, you know, we were asked to vacate, uh, move away to India uh, immediately. And we were not even given the time to pack our things. And they said that within two hours, you have to leave your house as it is. And um, maybe in another um, workshop, maybe or maybe on another day, I will tell you exactly what was the scenario. And then I, I had to, uh, she continued that, yes, we did. And she had given birth to a baby girl just uh, on that day itself. So it uh, now all of us can understand that 
a woman who has given birth to the child uh, cannot uh, you know get out of the bed immediately and start walking you know and during those days uh, the bullock carts which were available uh, was just for few people and what she said was the entire family and uh, maybe i can discuss it in depth later on and she said that we just have to move out so i said then uh, you know i was just listening to her you know and thinking and i was just observing her the way she was talking to me and uh, it seems as though you know she had gone back to her days while she's sitting still and she was narrating that particular story and i could observe her that yes uh, it was like in her memories she was traveling so this was a perfect scenario for my phenomenological a uh, paper so i just looked at her while she was narrating the entire thing and then she told me that while they were crossing uh, one of the rivers um, you know uh, they were asked to throw away the newborn baby also reason number one it was a female number two uh, they had the danger that yes the police men uh, maybe from india or from pakistan will go ahead and uh, definitely uh, uh, you know take away the child and kill them so the husband took the um, important decision that yes go ahead and throw the baby into the uh, small lake that was available for them or maybe a river i forgot that one so she has to dump a dump means she just has to throw away that baby so i could feel that yes there was this uh, some kind of uh, what you can say that um, uh, you know guilt on her face that yes she has been able to do that kind of a thing then i asked her okay now can we find you have gone ahead and you have done so after that it was like a question mark for me to understand what exactly was happening then you you won't believe me that she told me that she when she tried to uh, go ahead and dump that particular child the guilt and the way she was crying continuously on her journey towards india and then i told her i hugged her i said i can understand your pain however right now she is no more and none of us can do any kind of a help for her so you know i again went very close to her uh, hugged her and you know what she told me and she told me that the moment i met you i felt that you are that daughter of mine and i just looked at her immediately i got a shock of my life and i just looked at her and i said okay i'm your daughter because i had to make her convince and uh, you know bring her back to the normal so i said then why are you thinking that i'm your daughter as simple as that immediately she took my hand into her hand and she went to her room she opened uh, the typical what do you call jisme hum khazana rakhte hain the treasure box of us which was a big trunk and she took out her wedding sari and she gave it to me and she said that promise me that uh, you will come to my house every winter or you will be visiting my place uh, every time so you know why i'm telling you is that the guilt on her face now you see i'm unable to share the guilt that was exhibited now in that manner what happened was that while she was sharing that particular story i can see that she is going back to that 1946 end of that uh, july not july i would say on 1947 july ka mahina when she was supposed to leave pakistan board that train or by walking from rawalpindi to delhi the moment they came over here or stopping at amritsar how they had gone back over there and the kind of a thing that she shared it with me you know i got a shock of my life and i could understand what really was going through in her uh, memories or how the guilt was there and that's why that guilt has now taken the shape of the uh, emotional state of her crying in the form of the tears and the moment i told her okay don't worry i am your daughter think that i am that daughter now equated together now you see uh, each and everything that i'm talking to you has to be coded out in atlas ti and make uh, three papers out of it Uh, which i have not yet published it now uh, fortunately maybe uh, later on i thought i'll be doing it one as a narrative analysis i have done one as a phenomenological uh, analysis the same conversation 
so why i'm telling you is that when you are at this level and you are uh, coming up with the conversation you can come up with a lot of knowledge things and here comes in your qualitative approach each and every conversation that you have got if you have passion towards research that's what i would say and if you are a very good observer that is going to be my next topic of my discussion with um, all of you which i'll be giving it sharing it also after completing it then you will see that writing it becomes very very easy for you and that's why i said day one is your approach that it has to be started off and you should start writing um you know in your notebooks or your registers or your notepads or if you're carrying your computer continuously uh, smartphones or the tablets start jotting them immediately maybe in the form of a broken sentences however once you get the time put them together thread them together and you never know when this particular paper can be useful to you now for example now i have presented it in one of the conferences where i'm registered what i'm doing to do this particular conversation which i have written it in the form of the narrative analysis plus the manner a woman lost her daughter during the corona times she was admitted in the hospital and she was uh, about to deliver the girl or the boy i don't know i did not ask the parents about it again and she was hospitalized one day before she could go ahead and deliver the baby however during that hospitalization 20 within 24 hours um you know she gave birth to a dead baby boy because the doctor said that the child has also um, is a positive case until now we do not know how to treat those children so we have to go ahead and uh, you know uh, take uh, about the lady now when i when she came back she was also feeling guilt about it okay, yes i'm a mother however uh, you know i was unable to save my child and i had to abort it on the spot the moment i was admitted in the hospital that so much and so that i could not even see the face of my child and she was in uh, last stages of her pregnancy again so you know when you have talked to her and this particular scenario i saw that yes it's the same a uh, dip to different mothers however the scenarios you can see and what kind of a guilt a common guilt that was being developed out here so you know you can uh, go ahead and you can do this is my understanding because i'm a hardcore traditional feminist number one my studies focuses on displacement studies um displacement means what happens when you leave uh, your birthplace and you come back to a different place for example uh, when i went for the first time to china i had a tough time uh, over there now in the same manner when i visited japan i had really a tough time because i never knew that yes uh, you know once you bow in front of a person uh, the other person bows to you also okay so i'm not supposed to bow head again in return so the continuation of the bowing down is there similarly with the food with the tea uh, you know the way they work uh, those things and especially when i saw the children over there now it was a tough time in china you know completely uh, with respect to the culture it's a totally a different culture similarly when you go to us us uh, the moment you hit the rate of speech that you have got and the strong ethics that you need to carry with you like i if i'm sneezing i have to tell the person and in the same manner you know if i'm uh, uh, suffering from cold i'm not supposed to go to the office also and here in, in india no matter what happens you are sneezing you are uh, throwing out uh, taking away that mucus and on the roads i see them now here when you come back the kind of differentiations are there it really is very different so you know for me those cultural differences are also there for me and then i understood how to go ahead with the knowledge and say okay fine i have to survive here so you know the research in that way is a lot of it that you can think about it and that's why i say writing in research you cannot stop yourself you can write as much in fact the time is less with you people basically so these are the certain ways that we need to understand as to how to carry forward and then carry on so i hope uh, here um let me just stop for a while and ask each one of you if you are able to understand 
uh, what I am delivering out here, number one, and what exactly is going to take place out here. Okay, so here uh, I can see some of them out here. Ma'am, somebody said the session is, that's okay, Apurva. Ma'am, you are not visible um, visible in the sense you want me to switch on the camera. I think, Felix, that we can ignore it because uh, I'm recording also. And if we put on our videos on, especially with the brand width, I don't want that. That's why I was taking a bit of it. Otherwise, I'm here. It's a live person who is... Uh, giving you and uh, taking the session for each one of you. Uh, please share your share. Okay, I have done that, Kanan sir. Does the belief systems, Bible, etc., can be equated to positivism? Kanan sir, I'll be coming to positivism tomorrow. I'll be discussing uh, over there in positivism, and then we will see uh, what kind of belief systems the positivist take over in order to go ahead. You attended last uh, workshop of mine, and we know that positivism means it will be entering for your, uh, giving a rise to your quantitative studies. Now, if it is there, then there are different varieties of it. I will be showing it to you tomorrow. What are the different forms of positivism that we have got and how to handle those belief systems also, sir. Okay, so Risham is asking me, ma'am, can you explain with an example how we translate the questions into statement? Yes, Risham, I, uh, that's a very dangerously you have asked me, though I'm not uh, uh, willing to take the risk. Uh, I can give you an example of it, how to translate them. There are, again, uh, you can, I can give it to you, though that book, I don't know how well you will be taking care of it. It is written by Irving Kopi, and the name of the book is Introduction to Logic. Okay, so I have given to you. I will uh, go ahead and I would be uh, explaining, uh, taking some examples again tomorrow while I'm discussing those uh, philosophic research uh, schools which are there. So there you will see some of the uh, statements that would be coming in and I will be showcasing it to you. Ashutosh sir is saying that I'm going, uh, leaving, going to my school. Very nice session. Okay, thank you, sir. The screen is not visible. I hope I've been able to do that. And ma'am, I have to leave due to class. will continue in my 12.30 p.m. session. That's fine, Alka. So uh, now uh, some of you who are uh, present, um, I hope I've been able to make you understand a little bit of uh, what Popper is telling us and what uh, Kuhn has to give it to us, basically. Now, uh, let me, if in case there are any kind of questions, you can ask me more. If not, then I will go ahead uh, with the other discussions that I have to do, which I want to complete it in this particular session for, uh, for this particular slot. No questions? Yes, sir. Uh, well, it's not a uh, question. Uh, it's related to your narrative that you gave with regard to that uh, uh, that uh, story when you when uh, regarding that one uh, from Pakistan. When, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. That's right, sir. Yeah. So there, her memory stayed for uh, so many decades and years. So that uh, related uh, to that Ninja Dogs uh, <laughs> video that you shared yesterday. So I thought it was uh, uh, very much close to that. Because you say, uh, the dog also had that memory for so many decades and later on it, uh, uh, it uh, prevented uh, that uh, slave white from saving the man. And here also, in the reverse way, the lady had that, uh, that guilt feeling uh, overcoming her uh, for so many decades and she gave you the Winter, uh, the, this uh, hard dresses, etc. Thinking you are a doctor, so it's a great thing. I mean, thanks a lot. Yes, sir. And that's a perfect uh, phenomenological um, narrative, you know. And when I gave the title as feminist phenomenological narrative or phenomenological narrative from a feministic perspective. You know, uh, 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 that was the title that I gave, and the subtitle was a case from you know, partition time from Rabalpindi to India. You know, I did not complete the story because I don't know whether that is basically a guilt because that's a dilemma for me, in fact. That paper that had uh, concluded was that 
it was like a big dilemma now uh, i i love using whatever i have learned condenser in my critical theory uh, classes and i uh, really come up with these kind of a things uh, you know it's a perfect dilemma whether it was like a guilt for her or is it like a mother that yes she is missing her daughter that yes she was not able to uh, give the complete caring uh, like i am a advocate of caring philosophy so you know for me these things becomes really important in my models actually when i am coming up so i saw that it was a guilt plus the caring thing that she had forgotten and that's why you know the moment she rushed into the room to give me her wedding sari you know i was thinking there was no rush for her actually to give it that wedding sari to a stranger who has come for the first time to her house now that thing has to be compared even like you are from south india definitely yes you know that when a lady um, or a girl comes for the first time to the house uh, you know the host and hostess they go ahead in the tambulam i'm talking about they keep a sari or a blouse piece yes ma'am yes ma'am so those those are what i'm calling as the belief sets due to the culture now there instead of giving me a new sari or a new uh, thing and that is the cultural aspect of north indians that yes when a girl is coming in the mother or the mother in law hands over whatever is quite uh, uh, you know close to their heart so here she presented me as a daughter her wedding sari yes ma'am and she did not give to her uh, there were two sons also there and their daughter her daughter in law uh, in fact i have to say that she commented you are so lucky that she presented to you such a beautiful sari and with her for such a long time she did not give it to me so you will understand uh, how the things are fitting in for us from cultural uh, perspective and if i look at the ethnographic study later on now uh, you know you will be understand until day she is in contact with me and like a mother you know she always uh, calls me up every second day and she keeps talking to me also so uh, sometimes you know i see my mother feeling jealous of it that yes she ramini does not give me so much of time as she is giving it to this other lady also so you know you have those uh, things that you can really develop and carry forwards up so in that way you know qualitative studies really have helped me me or uh, to uh, go ahead and understand certain things and also to um, you know put pen them down on my uh, notebooks basically uh, on a daily basis also like that thank you ma'am yes sir thank you sir anybody else would like to share felix you are from um, africa so i think a lot of cultural differences can be seen from you yes or no felix are you there yeah. Yes, ma'am. There are so many cultural differences, now, especially in Baroda. I know that Baroda is a different uh, altogether the city as compared to Delhi and the uh, Delhi NCR. So uh, you know you have got a lot of scope to uh, write a uh, lot of narratives or the phenomenological stories. Now, especially when we are talking about phenomenology, try to understand that it's basically longitudinal studies also side by side. so you know uh, like uh, kanan sir has said lot of decades are there so you know you can understand and you can find it out right felix and you are here in, in india for how long it has been now i'm getting closer to a year i came in last february how many years i will be here for 3 years minimum for 3 years wow yeah, so 3 sure. years is also a good time for your observations basically sure and i will take yes. that into my advantage Yes. Now, what about Tenzin? Tenzin, are you there? Tenzin, I don't know where the Tenzin is. Now there is Francis. Yes, Tenzin, you are from India or outside it, the country? Yeah. Uh, hello. Yes, Tenzin. Yes, I am from Tibet. Oh wow! So yes. you also must be seeing lot of cultural differences, right? Yeah. Actually, I am born in India. Okay. So actually, I have assimilated <laughs> with Indian culture. <laughs> oh wow, that's wonderful. So where do you stay in Delhi? Uh, no, in uh, Bailakupe. It's in uh, Karnataka. Oh wow! Oh, yes, so, there so. are a lot yeah. of uh, people from Tibet yes. who have migrated to Karnataka. I would say, and yes. uh, very good work is being. Which university are you from? Uh, Christ University, Bangalore. Oh, so you yeah. are right now at Bangalore? 
uh, right now I came for holiday in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Bailakupe, Tibetan oh. settlement. We have yeah. four major settlements in the south. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm from Bailakupe. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, Tenzin. I keep coming to uh, Bangalore and visiting these Buddhist centers because of my research work on Buddhism also side by side. So let's mm -hmm. see if I'm lucky enough, I will definitely meet you uh, uh, that place also. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. So even yes. for you, um, uh, because you are coming from that side. So are you trained into Buddhism also side by side? Do you follow uh -huh. those things? Okay. No, no, actually, no. <laughs> no, you are not. No. Okay, fine. No. We fine, have uh, we have uh, major monasteries here. Oh. Uh, like Nyingma sects, so many, th uh, three, four sects, you know, it's in uh, uh, Karnataka. Okay. So, yeah, so, but, you know, um, uh, there, you know, all the monks and nuns, you know, they study there. So we are into, you know, college institution. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. Um, uh, you know, if you interact with the monastery uh, individuals, lot of yeah. things you can learn from them you know yeah because, uh, yes so yeah, i'm so inviting I'm, yeah yes. so i'm learning from you you know how to <laughs> get those you know uh, data from them so i hope you know in future i will do some good research <laughs> qualitative uh, research yeah. yes not only uh, in future in fact you start interacting with them the way mm. uh, they have the food mm. habits in the yes. monasteries both yes. uh, monastery, so I'm aware of it, especially with the nunneries. You know, you can mm. discuss with them and you can do a lot of work from that side also. Then with. Maybe yes. I will uh, contact to you later and I'll explain to you and you yeah. are supposed to take care of it. Francis, okay. Francis, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a yeah. lot for that interaction. Thank you. Francis, thank are you there? Francis? I have no idea about Francis now, though so I was thinking to take up some of the uh, things from uh, them also uh, and know uh, exactly how to go ahead and to discuss with them. Anyways, so, uh, you know, these are certain things that, uh, you know, are very much into it and uh, you can look uh, and study in depth. A uh, lot of these things are uh, available for us. Now, uh, let me uh, take you all to the textbooks where we uh, can look into it. This is the one, Conjectures and the Refutations is the first book. The growth of the, uh, here he has talked about is basically the growth of directly, he's talking about scientific knowledge that I was discussing with you all on my paint slides, if you have seen. Now, I don't know how many of you have gone ahead and read the chapters that I was asking about. Otherwise, if you get, now have a look at it. The first chapter itself is on that. The introduction says the sources on the sources of knowledge and of ignorance. Now, um, if you ask me very quickly, there are different kinds of sources of knowledge. Now we can talk uh, tomorrow, I will explain to you what are the sources of knowledge and how they are common in both uh, Western uh, thinkers as well as the Eastern thinkers. And we will be able to understand them, number one. Number two, then you're looking for science out here, conjectures and refutations, what is exactly happening. Some problems in the uh, philosophy of science. Now, philosophy of science, why? Because there are various things that they have discussed over there. And we will see what are those problems which we face on day by day basis and how the things are being carried out in across the different domains also. Now here, the three views of uh, concerning human knowledge. Now here comes in, he's giving you, um, if you read out very well and how to understand these things also. Now the science of Galileo and its new betrayal what Galileo has said and what are the new betrayal? Betrayal means uh, how the science of Galileo was uh, refuted or I would say falsified and a new concept was given. So he is discussing about that in next three pages. So the first one he talks about the way to go ahead with the knowledge is that ultimate explanation of the essences we will see this one tomorrow while i'm discussing some other topics or let's see if i'm able to do it right away the second view is theories as instruments now you see here is the uh, thing that has been pinpointed to us so that you understand why the theories form so important in your research work 
because they are the instrument for you so the more you are focusing on the theories given by different different individuals or the textbooks that you have got with you in your post graduation level or at mphil level when you are reading those textbooks you can come up with these theories also side by side then the criticism of the instrumentalist view now i haven't explained to you this is exactly a new kind of thought wave that has started of when uh, popper was writing his book and he says that you are supposed to go ahead and uh, you know place um, a work according to this particular view this is something that i'm going to read out line by line the third view is he's talking about conjectures then the concept of the truth that i uh, talked about right now and the reality now reality uh, is also something that we will have to understand it and see um, in terms of realism how many schools are there and when you are talking about reality again there are a lot of differences which come in so we will go ahead and we will understand uh, what these are and how to understand uh, each and every part of it i have given you uh, introduced the notion of truth to all of you now looking at conjectures conjectures are nothing but the uh, set of the beliefs or the uh, after the beliefs you can say the way we are developing our knowledge systems and then we go ahead about it and then we need to understand and find it out whether is that the reality i'm talking about or is it something else for example that i was talking about the cup of tea now the cup of tea is very good out here fine the way the tea is prepared in india and the way the japanese look at it there are two different versions people the more you boil tea the best tea it is whereas if they see the way we have prepared they say that what you are consuming is actually a uh, poisoned tea now tell me uh, which would be my reality now the tea that has been consumed in india for uh, so many people you go and uh, look at a dhaba wala or you look at the chai ka nukkar wala the way he is brewing again and again wo khub ubalta rehta hai ubalta rehta hai now the moment japanese look at the way the tea is being prepared in india they get a uh, heart attack and then they say they are shocked completely and they say how can you even drink that tea the tea is basically nothing but a poisoned cup that you are consuming and they uh, will dare they would even look at that tea it's a dangerous sign for them now when i looked at the way they prepared the tea what do they do they boil the water this boiled water is added into a tea pot and then that small cup is taken up where the tea leaves are being uh, in the tea pot after adding the water the boiled water they add the tea leaves wait only for 2 minutes not more than that or maybe a minute and then they consume it in those small small cups and that's it as simple as that हम लोग तो उबालते भी हैं चाय को और फिर उसका बाद खत्म हो जाता है उसी चाय में और दूध डाल के फिर उसको और उबालते हैं सो यू नो दी इफ यू लुक कम्स अप विथ लॉट ऑफ टाइम वेन यू आर नॉट है i have uh, like i'm very fond of cooking so that's one of my hobbies and after cooking you know uh, some of the one of my best friends she stays in us and she said that i want you to post the videos that you are cooking because i learned the kashmiri cooking also and she said you're going to post the videos for me because she's a horrible cook and she said that mera jab bhi man karega i will be remembering you number 1 number 2 i will look at your videos and i will start uh, preparing accordingly now what happened is that uh, rather than uh, placing them on youtube because when i was preparing those videos and i saw youtube takes a lot of time so i thought uh, i'm teaching her so why not uh, put it into the wiki pages so you know uh, wikipedia uh, it's not just the wikipedia they have a lot of platforms and one of the platform is wiki how jack again who is a good friend of mine and who takes care of the wikipedia wiki pages and all he said that is very good and uh, not only in english you are going to now put them into multiple languages like in hindi telugu whatever i'm cooking i'm supposed to do that so wiki how pages the moment i posted uh, how to prepare the kashmiri tea the pink tea the salted tea 
I saw that some of the Americans coming and sharing and saying that, oh, uh, don't uh, uh, boil the tea so many times, you are ruining the tea. Then I was thinking, then how would the Kashmiris drink? Because in Kashmiris uh, tea preparation, they add even the baking soda. A pinch of it, they add it so that they can get that pink color actually into the tea. So I was thinking, if I don't add the pink color, because baking soda, every day if you keep consuming, and in Kashmir, if you go there, this particular tea is like a, we drink the tea or coffee uh, in the other regions of the country. Like I see, minimum number of uh, tea that I see people consuming in a day is not less than 10. Small, small cups bhi hote hain, aajkal to glasses aage hain, those uh, paper glasses. So I see them drinking at least 10 times. Chalo yaar, chai ki break hai. After every one hour, they want to consume it. So 10 times, 15 times, 20 times, sometimes the people who are addicted, it's more than that also sometimes. Now, if I look at Kashmiris and if they're drinking this tea with the baking soda, okay? Now I saw that uh, there is this relationship that came across that number of tea that they're drinking and the way the kidneys are spoiled in their body. So, you know, in the later stages, the kidneys are spoiled because too much of baking soda and that also on a daily basis and that also so frequently is uh, has an effect on the kidney. So that was one of the medicinal paper that I had to develop with one more doctor basically. So you will see that yes, the cultures that we are talking about. Now that is the uh, how well it is matching with the reality. Now that is what I wanted to show that yes, uh, preparation of the tea number one number two consumption of that baking soda tea the pink color tea because even the guests are coming they want to uh, prepare this particular pink tea and they are giving it and then uh, the way the kidneys are being affected also so how the reality is being matched is what i have to look into it so uh, for me when i'm looking for this culture from a qualitative perspective, you know, I know what I'm supposed to do it also side by side. So I hope in a very nice manner, uh, at least I've been able to give. However, these chapters are three views of the human knowledge, which is necessary for us to understand and read them out here. Later on uh, in these chapters, why I did not ask you to read it, if you can read, it's very good because he is taking up the examples from different writers and Kant himself is a wonderful uh, thinker in that way. And he discusses certain things, which I said I haven't completed from his book also side by side. Now here they are talking about the Copernican revolution, Galileo, then Copernican revolution, and later on what is happening in the this I haven't yet explained to you, uh, science and metaphysics. Tomorrow I'm going to um, uh, take care of these topics and then you would be able to understand them. Now comes here the logic. Have you understood? That's the reason why I gave away that book. Because when I am taking up a class uh, or let's say uh, the sessions on critical thinking, it is there we introduce this particular book and we carry forward into um, our understanding of certain things. However, uh, if you can go through it, it's well and good. Otherwise, just wait for some time. Then maybe later on, uh, after this workshop, maybe two, three concepts more, and I would be coming up with the next workshop also. So here, uh, they are talking about this so that he talks about the truth, the falsehood, and all these things that is coming up basically. And then he is discussing about the growth of knowledge in terms of the theories and the problems for us which are present. Now facts, I'm not going to uh, make you understand right now. However, this is where I am more interested in for each one of you. So that's why I said I want each one of you to read them as soon as possible so that you are able to understand them. Next comes the reputations. Now here, somebody was asking me, talking about, uh, can you please explain with the help of the positivism? So once I'll be discussing about it, Karnap's theory is also there, then Comte is there, then there are other people you will see who are talking about the positivism. And there we will be talking about all these things which have come up and we say that, yes, now I'm trying to do the reputations out here. And you will see uh, how to understand that also more and more. 
then uh, tomorrow or let's see if I'm able to give you at least a glimpse of the picture about what I'm going to do tomorrow. And then you will understand what is the role of the language that is being played um, in our uh, thesis and the uh, uh, entire research that is there for us. And then once we have completed, we will be, uh, he talks about the growth of the other uh, uh, research areas in terms of Hegelian dialectic, or he's talking about the rest of the people who are coming up with their own research areas, like uh, hermeneutics, structuralism, modernism, all those things. So uh, for me, more than all these things, I am more interested into these chapters which are there. And uh, tomorrow, after introducing certain things, I will be able to discuss these things also side by side. The second book, which is very uh, important to us, is The Logic of the Scientific Discovery. Now, you see, you will have to see the chronology of Popper's work. Now, I'm not going to give away all the works that he has done. However, these two books turn out to be very important uh, when I come to the research areas uh, fully. So here he is discussing about them and he is uh, talking uh, as to how we can go ahead. And if you look at his uh, content out here again, just give me a moment. Let me come to that page where the content is there. I think contents is not there in this version. That's okay. But there are uh, one chapter where he is uh, talking about completely on falsification. Now, that is where I am more interested into uh, to read the chapter and make you understand. Now, this book is written in 1967. Imagine. Um, so, it's such a traditional book that we have got. Yes, I don't have the uh, content of this book. Let me see if there is other book where I can get the content. And here, can you see, he is talking about the problem of induction. Now, these are the ones that we are doing it. Now, I, one of the person asked me, uh, can you give us the example of the logical statements? These are the ones. All swans are white. Now, every statement uh, sentence that you have developed in your questionnaire, if it has to be converted into the statement, they will be coming in the form of A, E, I, O, U. Now, what does this mean? Either it will be taking up in the form of all swans are white. That is in the form of universals. Now, I'll be explaining to you about that also. Uh, I thought um, today I'll just be focusing on these three books to understand and then talk about those things. However, I think the time has come for me just to uh, give you a glimpse of what we are talking about now you see when you are in the domain of scientific knowledge remember that there are two things uh, five things that will be necessary for you one is called as the problem of universals and particulars what do you mean by universals and particulars now for example if i ask you uh, to come up to this sentence, all swans are white. Now, if I have to go for this particular sentence, now the question arises, have we seen all the swans in this world? Now, imagine it. Later on, I'll tell you how this thing is important. Now, this is called as a kind of a statement and later on I'll explain to you why these are all swans are white in color now the, how many swans did I say I don't know or I can say another form of the statement of this particular variety uh, for the variables will be no swans are white okay and then I get another variety of the statement as some swans are white and the last one is some swans are not white now depending upon your uh, research areas 
the statements are to be converted into this format this is e this is i and this is o now here you will see when i talk about all it means that i have exhausted all kind of swans present in this world and i declared it that yes all of them are white this is the universal fact or if i say no swans are white in color in a way i'm talking about again i've exhausted about all the swans and i'm talking about uh, again the universals which are there particulars will be no matter even if i've seen one swan in zoo i would say some swans are white in color you see the induction is coming in uh, when you talk about deduction and induction which is your next problem induction and deduction this is one more thing then you have got what you call it as the uh, noumena and phenomena or sense experiences this is for the sense experiences and the second one is for the conceptual level that you are at so here is that would be called as phenomena next one that we are talking about is the differences between subjective and objective which i'll be dealing with it and i'll be making you understand how the biasnesses are coming in and how to deal with them or is it possible to deal or it is not possible to deal also so this is your objective part that we are talking about and uh, so these are the four parts that you have got mota mota and then i'll be telling you if in case i want to introduce some more part also so uh, you know uh, these are the ones that we will have to uh, understand it and carry forward the third one is language intact in fact and then we will see how to understand that also okay so uh, these uh, topics i'll be discussing it tomorrow for uh, all of us and uh, that's where he is talking about if you can look up problem of induction then known by experiences when i'm talking about the experiences this is where the realm of experiences would be coming in now whose experiences should i talk about now should i talk about your experiences each one of yours or would you go ahead and um, like yesterday the moment i discussed about the partition story like uh, kanan sir commented today then uh, you know yesterday i received uh, at most uh, 25 messages privately telling me ma'am if you are so much interested on the partition uh, research we will help you a lot 25 people have said that now uh, can you imagine that so i just narrated my own experiences which was backed by another 25 people maybe rest of them were also thinking ki, okay we should we share it with ramni ma'am or not so you know if i'm talking about the displacement uh, stories um you know you will come up a lot of things that are available for us now delhi is full of the people who have come from the pakistan uh you know and we know the areas where they are living and how it is taking place same is the case with uh, amritsar you go there you will find it out then dehradun okay uh, that is one more area and now tenzin was telling us about the tibetan buddhist also uh, similarly so you will see that those experiences are coming in now the question arises should we trust those experiences or not in order to get the scientific knowledge out of it so tomorrow when i'm going to begin with you will uh, be able to understand that yes how the differences are coming in so here we have got one uh, universals and particulars second is deduction and induction third one is noumena and uh, phenomena the next one level will be talking about is the experiences then comes what you call it as the subjective and objective okay now here he is talking about those things only right now and then later on uh, you know now you see he is not talking about all these things now see logical truths now it's not just like that you know you require little bit a uh, kind of more training into these ones also so that we know what he is talking about and oh yes now he has given us the hint 
The other one is uh, which I have to talk about uh, is a priori and posteriori. Now you must have heard about these words when you are doing the quantitative research work, a priori uh, arguments and a posteriori also. So this is also something that I will be discussing a lot and lot so that you are able to know them. I won't take much time into that, uh, maybe at 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> for each one of them. And then we can carry forward. So remember that these are also the ones that are there for us uh, in terms of the research, basically. And later on, you will find it out that, yes, he is talking about reliability, probability, validity, all these things. Now, can you see? how the research which we are talking about we just take it away very lightly without knowing that yes these intricacies are also available and we are supposed to go ahead and understand them also side by side so here comes in the entire thing that he is talking about and later on um, you know, he discusses about the uh, problem of demarcation in terms of the subjective and objective, which I'll be doing it. And later on, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the, um, what do you call the um, content list? Otherwise, I could have shown to you. So here comes from the sense experiences. He's talking about the concepts, which I'll be show, uh, showing it again tomorrow, not today. Then we have got the statements which are necessary for us to understand so that we come to the judgments or the propositions or what you call it as the statements out here and then move ahead to positivism or to the interpretivism. Now, this is the way now you understood why this grounding has to be done so that I can make you understand tomorrow without saying I just start off with my uh, what is logical uh, positivism and give you the importance of interpretivism, you will, and if someday you come across these kind of terminologies, you will say, Ramni ma'am, you did not tell us properly. So here they are talking about the universal statements about the reality. And then in the moment you are writing the chapter on justification and explanation, you are going to say and talk about all these things also. Most of the time we say that, yes, uh, the population is this thing. This is my sample size. So I'm happy with it. However, you don't say whether this sample size, the uh, research that you have done, is it really matching the reality or not? Now to map this reality, fine, you're doing the quantitative part of it. And you might even go for the qualitative work also out here, the quality work. However, uh, have you got the complete knowledge of the initial research topics that we are looking over? So what you are doing is basically this much in the entire continuum. And this is, again, I would say not the right method. If you have come and you have collected the data, find out whether the collection of the data also is being done in a proper manner or not for us. And then you go ahead and conclude your chapters that are there for you and say, see, now coming from this explanation, I would say that, yes, my contribution to the research work is quite close to the uh, empirical research. And now you will understand why they are the word empirical research or action research, pragmatic research comes into the picture because you are showcasing that, yes, my research is quite uh, close to the reality and what is happening in the given society for yourself. So here, these are the ways in which you are supposed to know and uh, go ahead. And here comes the possibility. Now, here is uh, here discussing it um, tomorrow when I'll be talking about, I'll be giving to you experiences, consciousness, awareness. These are the ones that you are supposed to know it also side by side. And then what is he talking about the falsibility? Now, can you look conclusively decidable? Then he's talking about verify them to falsify them. You see, till the time you haven't done the critical thinking courses, understanding these things becomes very, very vague. And, you know, because we are trained into it uh, completely. So, you know, I'm able to understand, for example, in quantitative, 
Why is it that when you are taking care of the smart PLS, the bootstrapping for 5,000 times of your data is being taken care of because they want to go as close as possible to the reality. Now, you see, the team is aware of it in Germany and they are able to identify it and then they say, you see, the data that you have collected it, we have uh, through with the help of the bootstrapping uh, done for 5,000 times we have increased just to showcase that yes my mediation my moderation or whatever i'm trying to prove out here is quite close to the uh, reality that i'm looking for so you know this though you're doing it however what the what about the prior part of it are you doing it in a very nice manner no so what you're requiring and what you are stating in your thesis or the paper is only, uh, I don't know, half knowledge or one fourth knowledge or what knowledge it is, I'm not aware of it. However, if you look at Elsevier papers or the Scopus papers, how they are writing, they write not less than 10 papers, uh, 10 pages of the research paper. Or sometimes I see that 25. Initially, when I used to look at the number of pages, uh, sometimes 45 also. I used to get a shock of my life, a paper of 45 pages However, now I understand because they are giving you the complete flow of the things that are required by you to do it in the research part. And that's why uh, it's publishing in Scopus papers becomes very difficult because how you are going to do the um, uh, writing the paper using these kind of jargons and everything is also necessary. So tomorrow, uh, not right now, I'm going to end up till here expecting that, yes, some of you will be uh, reading all these things and coming back tomorrow to me so that it becomes much more easier. Or if you don't want to read right now, just wait till tomorrow. I'll be giving you more of it. Or maybe day after tomorrow, I will just see if I'm able to read at least these chapters very quickly for you. So that you are able to understand at least and once you complete with this workshop, you know what exactly is happening in the domain of research and why these things are required so that you enter into the realm of qualitative studies or the uh, quantitative studies of it. So tomorrow I would be taking through again uh, the fundamentals of it, which I have said uh, these ones, which I'll be doing it tomorrow and making you understand one, two, three, four, five, six of them are there. In fact, there is one more. Seventh, we will see um, the difference between mind and brain. That is also biggest problem. So we will uh, go through with this. So these are the seven things. And these uh, slides would be kept like that only. I'm not going to change them at all. And uh, tomorrow, when I come back, I would be starting off uh with these uh, uh topic with this particular topic and i would complete with this and then carry forward with the other topic that i wanted to take care of it also, side by side. okay so i think uh, i'm going to stop till here only my next class will session will start off at 12 30. so maybe we can go ahead and we can know more about it also Yes, Apurva, these things are necessary. I know these are very vague terms and uh, many people are not able to uh, even capture the iota of it. Now, these kind of a topics, you know, we really completed in six months time. So I'm not going to take up uh, this one. So I thought I will break up small, small uh, topics into the workshops part of it and then carry forward also. Thank you, Resham. Uh, Apurva saying, so tonight 8 to 10 will be a different session than this one, right? No. Why should it be? This is the one that I'll be continuing even at 8 to 10 also. Now, 12.30 uh, onwards, it would be yesterday's topic only. Uh, because uh, I haven't uh, done uh, for that particular team. And even tonight at 10.30, I will be repeating yesterday's only. Today's, this particular session will be not be repeated, uh, will be repeated to 12.30 and 10.30 time slots, basically. Okay, so these are the ones that we have got. And then uh, we'll be taking care of it. Yes, attendance, uh, I think only eight of you are there. So I have already taken the screenshot number one and since it is being recorded so you can simply write it down apurva has written attendance so others also kindly go ahead and start giving your name so that it is there 
um, in my seat also side by side. Yes, quickly, all of you, Tenzin, uh, Felix, Kanan, sir, uh, then Jaspreet Kaur, Francis, Resham. Quickly, after one after the other, you can just write it down. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. So 12.30 would be the repetition of yesterday's class only. Okay. And 8 o'clock, I would be repeating the same thing over there. Again, from 8 to 10 o'clock, the same session that I took up right now with all of you. Okay. So I think all of you have given me your this thing. So I can go ahead and stop recording right now. <clears throat> and if some of you are looking forward to join me up for yesterday.